Alrighty, what's up everybody? Peter Gilmore here for a Monday evening video right here on the Peter Gilmore YouTube wrestling page. YouTube.com slash Peter Gilmore. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you like this video and hit that subscribe button down below. And tap that bell, turn on all my notifications so you never miss an upload. Share this video all over the internet. That's it. Alright, I hope everybody had a great Monday evening right now. 5.30 in the evening on a Monday, January the 13th, 2020, already in the middle of January. Can you believe that? We were just talking about New Year's Day, and we're 13 days into the new year, the new decade. And the crazy weather we're having, you know, it was like 66 here yesterday, and this weekend we're getting snow. Ugh. And I gotta go to WOW on Saturday, I don't even know if I'm going. Depends on on how the, how bad the what the weather is. So it'll suck if I have to miss the show, but even though, even if the show goes on, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Hopefully they they saying it's a mix, so maybe it will start off as a little bit of rain and then probably like change over to snow by the end of the end of the night. So getting home if I do go if. And home will be a kind of an adventure with the with the train and the bus and everything. So we'll see what happens. If not, I'll just stay home and use use my day off. I got anyway. I guess I'll just chill and do something else. Maybe I'll just watch. Uh, I can't watch football because there's no football on Saturday. I'll probably just chill and maybe do some videos and do something. My time, maybe go to the movies. Well, it's gonna be crappy outside, so movies are out. So maybe I'll just watch some DVDs, maybe some Netflix, maybe some video games that I've been neglected. Like I got Resident Evil 2 uh, from Gamefly. I uh, just started playing it. I'm having a hard time getting past the first board, you know, because I haven't played Resident Evil 2 in so long, and it's the new look Resident Evil. You know, things things are different from the first game, so I have to like. You know, use a cheat code, use a cheat cheat sheet to find out everything. But I'm getting used to it. Probably won't be playing Resident Evil for long. I'm waiting for Final Fantasy VII Remake to come out. Uh, then Resident Evil 3 Remake is going to come out. I might get that. Um, play it for a little while and then throw it away. You know. And this year the PlayStation 5 is coming out. And they can play every single game on, on every... On um, PlayStation, PlayStation One games, PlayStation Two, Three, Four, and Five games. So it's a, it's an all-in-one system, which is great. Price is fucking you know, amount. Um, the price is too much for my for me right now. I can't even get the PlayStation Five when it comes out. I have to wait till 2023 before it comes out before I can get it. And by that time, PlayStation Six will come out. So what what would be the point of of me even getting a PlayStation Five? I mean, I have every I have every PlayStation already, so but some I'm selling my PlayStation One and and probably my PlayStation Two. I get the PlayStation Five when I have the money for it. Maybe my girl, maybe Rose will get it for me when it comes out. Well, not when it comes out. When it go, goes down in price, about two hundred, two fifty, three hundred dollars. Maybe she'll get it for me. Or maybe one of my uh, my her family might get it for me. Or my, maybe my family will get it for me. I'll put it down on my list, but. So. Anyway, about that, about that, enough about that bullshit. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of this video. And as the title below says, it is time for your late and out of date TNA Hard to Kill review. Impact Wrestling, I still call it TNA, I don't give a shit. Impact Wrestling had their Hard to Kill event in, uh, in. I believe it was in Dallas, Texas, uh, last night, and it was a pretty decent show. It was all right. It was headlined by uh, the world title match between Sammy Callahan and Tessa Blanchard. Uh, we saw some interesting things happen in that match. We have a new world champion. I think you know. This is a little spoiler, but I think you know if you've seen Hard to Kill last night. And now, now, T now, Impact Wrestling is. I'll be going on to uh, the next events. Uh, they got another pay-per-view coming up in April in New York City at Terminal 5. 
I don't know when it's going to be. I know it's in April, but I don't know when it's going to be. And I'm not going to it. You want to know why I'm not going to it? It's because of the venue. Terminal 5 is a piece of shit venue. I'm, I'm going to the venue anyway because I got to see in this moment. That's, that's one thing. But I'm going to tell you right now. I, I, I If in this moment is listening to this video, and I probably are. Terminal 5 is a bad location. Really bad. Really bad stage. It's just really bad. And the reason why is no air conditioning. It's going to be April, so, I mean, it'll be okay. But you can't. it's going to be so fucking packed from the front of the stage to this. From the front of the stage is here, like here. And you can fit, like, people over here. So I'm going to probably be around here. Somewhere, like, somewhere right around here. You know, I'm, I'm going here or even here. Probably around here somewhere. With Rosa. I'm going to be a packed sardine. That's going to be a humongous... Bleh, especially when Brackville Brides go on. and It's going to be a humongous mess. I might move. I, I would move to the front of the stage, but... when it, Especially when In This Moment goes on last, because they're, they're the headliner. But... I never liked Terminal 5. I never liked it. Even when I went with Ring of Honor. When I went to Best in the World 2015... Uh, I think it was 2014-2015 when Jay Le when Jay Lethal won both belts. When it was the TV champ. I believe it was 2014. I might be I could be wrong. But uh Yeah, but Terminal 5 is, is a crap happy venue. It's like a dingy bingo hall. That way. It has a couple levels you can see almost everything. The ring is going to be right in the middle. They're going to have a stage where you can sit on the stage, like in Ring of Honor. And you can, you know, basically, basically touch the wrestlers. And I've been on, I've been on the, on the, uh, the stage twice when I was at Ring of Honor. For TV taping. I was in the front row. You can see me some, for some of the matches. Not all of them, but. And then I was on, uh, the Aftermath, uh, on, um, the YouTube page. Uh, when Kevin Kelly and Steve Carino used to do the aftermath of the house shows, they did it on their Facebook and and um, YouTube page. I was on, I was um, I wasn't on. You can you see me like maybe one video when they were doing uh, uh when they were doing a uh, Field of Honor, you see me in one of the post post uh, the post show uh, videos. But um, uh, yeah. So and and you know if you if you or a good friend of me, of mine on Facebook. I I have a picture of a uh, ODB and uh, Samoa Joe when Samoa Joe's last match in Ring of Honor, uh, Ring of Honor's 200th episode, I believe I went to on TV. Now it's up to like almost 350 now. But the venue is horrible. It is fucking horrible. And they're gonna have their next event called the TNA's gonna have their next event called Rebellion. Sometime in April, you know, I'm not looking forward to it. I don't want to go. I mean, if the if the ticket prices are cheap, maybe I'll go. I'll probably sit. I'll try to sit in general admission, or sit somewhere near the front. Cause you know the front row seats are gonna cost a lot. And on the stage, so I'm not gonna get the stage. It's, that's definitely out of my price range. You know, it is what it is, but the show itself was all right. It wasn't great, but as TNA starts their uh, pay-per-view year, and uh, let's get to the matches, and uh, let's not waste any more of your precious time. All right, we start off with our first match, Madman Fulton of OVE taking on the lethal, well, no, not the lethal, the, the uh, He's taking on Ken Shamrock. I forgot who was the most dangerous man or something like that. He was his moniker in WWE. WWF back in the day. Back in the Attitude Era. Uh, match was... Eh. It, it was really tough to get to get through. And, you know... Batman Fulton 
beating the crap out of Ken Shamrock a couple of weeks ago on the program. And um, Ken Shamrock trying to get revenge. So we got this match. And like I said, it was kind of hard to watch. Dave and Jake Christ at ringside. Uh, and Shamrock attacks the legs to begin, takes down Fulton. And gets a takedown. Shamrock looks for an arm bar, but Fulton fights to the ropes. And then he starts beating up on Shamrock. Fulton single legs him. And um, Shamrock pulls a heel hook and Fulton makes the ropes. So basically this was like a cat and mouse game. Uh, you know, Shamrock trying to use his quickness and his 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 strength and his his submission moves to ground the bigger and taller and stronger Madman Fulton, but get that. So there was that. And then uh Shamrock tries for a tope. I gets caught and uh, he tries a German and, and instead just drops Fulton down. <laughs> so he botched that move. Uh, takes out Jake, posts Fulton, and goes back in with some kicks. And then Dave, distra Dave Chris dis distracts him. Gets taken out. And the ref tosses OVE to the back. They're out. Uh, Fulton attacks Shamrock, attacks the arm. Hits a choke slam, but Shamrock fires back. Looking for a hanging Kimura lock. And uh, drags Fulton to the mat. Fulton escapes, teasing that he popped his shoulder out. Ugh. It's disgusting. Uh, it counts into a really horrible power bomb. Uh, but while this was happening, Shamrock gets the rings of Saturn, uh, and he gets the win via submission. So he picks up the win, nine and a half minute match. I think it went on too long, and it was really, I was like saying, why is this the opener? It should have been like in the middle, of the, middle of the card. This is a horrible choice by the horrible bookers at at uh, Impact Wrestling. Just bad. I would have had the tag team title match first, but that's just my opinion. So we'll get that. So, yeah, so a match I gave two out of five stars. It was just horrible, and that's all I got to say about that. All right, then we have commentaries of, of Josh Matthews and Don Callis. Uh, they talk about Rich Swan's ankle injury. I think he he got last week, or at a, at a, at a different house, at a, not a house show, at a... Um, Another event, I believe. I don't, I don't really hear anything about that, but the, they're saying that he might not compete tonight, so it might be Willie Mack going on his own in the tag title match against the North. Let's see what happens with that. And we move on. All right, match number two for the X Division title. We had Ace Austin defending against Trey Miguel. Uh, Trey had his mom at ringside, you know, the whole thing with, with Ace Austin you know, kind of teasing. Uh, teasing and and teasing uh, his mom, Trey Miguel's <coughs> excuse me, I can't even talk. Trey Miguel's mom and Trey getting into getting into his business and then getting his ass handed to him. Um, so we got all that. So it was a good match, pretty good to uh fit, to start the match. Starts off with. Uh, Trey attacking right away, goes to the floor, then back in. Trey tackles him, follows with like, some ground and pound moves. Uh, Austin goes outside, five, but Trey hits an Zagiri. And they go to the floor. Austin cuts him off with some knee strikes. Uh, Trey fires back with kicks and a kick flip moonsault. And then Austin slams him into the apron. They go back in. Trey hits a clothesline, uh, some chops. Then Austin dumps him to the floor and follows with a Fosbury flop. They're basically they're like in the in and out of the ring most of the match, but uh, you know they go they trade on the floor. Austin hits a suplex, slams Trey to the barricades, and um, and he starts chopping chopping Trey right in front of his mom and talking shit to his mom, and uh, goes back in comes when they fall. They trade they trade moves. Uh, Austin hits a super kick, which gets a near fall, and then uh. He falls up with a slam, then another one, then Trey counts back. Austin chop blocks the knee and lays the boots to him. He targets the knee in the middle, the middle to near the end of the match. Uh, then he hits Trouble in Paradise. Uh, and a bang of Rama for a near fall. Then he hits a slop. He, he falls up with a, a really bad looking sharpshooter. Uh, 
And he gets a play playing card and paper cuts tray and uh goes for two. Ow. Uh he goes back to work with some strikes. Trey fires back, hits a basement drop kick. Uh, then, he, then he fires up, hits an insecurity, goes up top. Austin avoids the move. And Trey hits an inverted suplex into the Dragon Sleeper. Uh, looked like he was about to win the title. Austin escaped, followed with some strikes. Trey trips him up and hits a flatliner for a near fall. And Austin comes back with a disaster kick for a near fall. Goes up top. He follows him. Trey slips out into... Cheeky Nando's, whatever that move is, and and then a 619. And then Austin crutches him up top, hits a Hurricane Rana uh, with, with a fold, and he gets the win to retain the title. So, pretty good match. I gave it two and a half out of five stars. It went a little bit be a little bit next level, but didn't get that far. But still a good match as Ace Austin retains his belt that he won at a uh, they won last year, so he's held them up for a couple months. Look at that. Uh, after the match, he tries to hit on uh, Trey's mom, and then Trey attacks him. So this feud is going to continue on, probably all the way to Rebellion, so another match. We'll see what happens with that. So we'll get that. So yeah, so Ace Austin continues as the knock the knockout champion, the uh, X Division champion. And uh, we'll see what happens with him over the next couple of weeks on uh, uh, TNA TV, on Impact Wrestling TV. Uh, probably this, probably tomorrow night. We'll see what happens with the fallout. Yeah. And uh, that's all I got to say about that. All right, then we get Gabby interviewing ODB, one of the participants in the Knockouts title match with uh, herself, Jordan Grace, and Taya. Uh, she says it's been a hell of a year. She came back and got involved in all this mess. Thanks to fans that 2020 has been great so far, and she's going to become a five-time, 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 five-time knockouts champion. So, we'll see what happens with ODB and um, in the title match. I, I really don't think she's going to win, but you never know. So, we'll get that. So, I give that two out of five stars. Then we get to the match. And, uh, holy crap, was this bad. This was uh, the worst Women's match in the history of women's matches. Almost worse than show, uh What was it? Uh, it was a, t a match in TNA that was just horrible. I forget who it was. I think it was Shomel and uh, I forget the other person's name, but that was really bad. It was like way back, like 2006, I think. Uh, I forget the year when it was, but I think you know what I'm talking about. It was fuck. It was just fucking horrible. And uh. I, I didn't like it, and uh get that. So it's Taya defending her long knockouts championship reign against ODB and Jordan Grace. And Johnny Bravo at ringside. So the match starts with them with um them arguing uh, Jordan Grace or them all arguing. Then ODB attacks, she takes control. Ty goes to the floor as ODB works over Jordan Grace. Uh then they fight on the apron, Taya drop kicks ODB to the ramp. And Jordan takes over until Taya cradles her for a near fall. And then Jordan comes back with a power slam. A suicide dive. And then ODB slams her onto the ramp. Ow. And then uh, Taya got, got involved and got the momentum for herself. Slamming, uh, slamming ODB into the turnbuckle. Uh, she, she hits the double knees. And she covers for a near fall. Then she hits the curb stomp. And then knocks in the STF. Uh, Jordan Grace makes the save. And starts beating up Taya. Taya fires back and then bites Jordan. Ow, I don't know. Like in the face or something like that. She beats her down in the corner. Stomps away at her. And she attacks the arm. Uh, Jordan comes back. And then ODB flies in with a bulldog off the second rope. And then everybody's down. Uh, they get back to their feet. Uh, Jordan starts to fire up. She hits a slam, and then another one, and then a spin buster for uh, a tire for a near fall. Looks for a German. Hit, she hits it, and ODB makes the save on the cover. Uh, Biden sends them e into each other, but Jordan cradles tire for a near fall. And we get near the end, and uh, Tyler's in control. She looks at Rhodes for how that was countered by Jordan. ODB hits a really sloppy. TKO. I mean, it's really sloppy TKO. 
But Jordan made the save. Would be fights off Grace Driver once, but but uh, Grace hit, hits it anyway as uh, Johnny Bravo got involved and was talking to the ref. Uh, this was going on. Taya covered uh, ODB and uh, picks up the cheap win. And uh, this was horrible. I gave it 1.25 out of five stars. One and a half, one point, one and a quarter stars. It was just horrible. And it, it was just horrible. And um, I was hoping that, you know, Tyus reign would end at this pay-per-view. But I guess it's not. It's probably going to end at Rebellion now in April. It's going to be like almost a full year since Tyus held the belt. I mean, and really, who who's going to stop her right now? Who's going to beat her? Are they gonna are they gonna keep going with this ODB Jordan Grace feud? I, I don't know. I don't really know who's gonna beat jo uh, Taya Valkyrie right now. And uh, that's all I gotta say about that. So yeah, one and a quarter stars for this horrible match, and a really a rough start to uh, TNA right now. The pay per view just just started off really bad and then kind of ended. In a little bit, in a little bit better, but still, you know, it is what it is. All right, then we get to match number four. We got RV, we got Bob Van Dam. Suck. I'll take it on Brian Cage. Uh, we got Katie Forbes at ringside. Uh, the lovely Katie Forbes, who can sit on my dick all night long. That's all I gotta say about that. Uh, RVT attacks on the floor, sends Cage into the ring post. And um, after Katie Forbes distracted Cage, uh, then RV goes on top, hits a flying kick, and Cage fights back with one arm. I think he hurt his arm while he was on the outside. Uh, hits a knee strike and has a super kick. Then RV drop kicked the chair into Cage's face, beating him up, and we see Cage's mouth is busted wide open. Blood! And then we see uh, KD Forbes hold the chair in front of Cage's face. RVD goes up top, hits the Van in Terminator, and goes for the cover, but stops as we see Daga arrive. And the ref stops the match, I guess because the, of, uh, you know, after he probably got knocked completely out. I don't know. Um, so the refs take Cage away, and then RVD starts to attack Daga. Oh, I, I didn't rate that. I didn't rate it anything because it was just a waste of time. A waste of five minutes. So, Cage is gone. Cage is gone. Uh, Cage is now... That, this was his last match in TNA, by the way. And he signed a, a, a nice... I think it was a nice three, five-year deal with... We signed a deal with AEW. So, he's going to be appearing on AEW in the near future. Uh, that That's nice and dandy. You know, put him in the world title picture. Um, him and Kenny could have that match. You know, they had a picture of, of themselves, you know, at a, at, a, at a some event. I think it was in um in Los Angeles. I think they had them they had them posing, and then everyone was everybody, they had a caption. What would happen if the if the Swolverine f faced the Omega? So you might see that. You might see Iron Cage versus Kenny Omega in AEW, and I think it'll be a phenomenal match. We'll see what happens. So RVD wins by a ref stoppage, and uh, that's that. I, I didn't like the I don't like the finish. I, I think she just had RVD pin him, and Cage goes to the back and leaves and goes bye bye with Melissa Santos. So I, I think Melissa Santos is going to AEW as well. I don't know what's happening with her, but get that. And then Dog and then Daga comes out. They start beating up at each other. Then we have a mat. Uh, uh, Impromptu match. Match was a little bit better. Uh, RVD was in control, and then Daga dumped him to the floor. He falls with a dive. They go back in. Daga flies, but he gets cut off, and RVD cradles him off for a near fall. Daga then get, hits a gut, gut buster, and then uh, covers for a near fall. Falls with some more strikes, and then goes for a move. Katie chips him up as RVD attacks him, and then he hits a leg drop. And RVD heads up top, hits the five-star frog splash. 
I pinned Daga in a match I gave two out of five stars. But, uh, yeah. I really don't know what they're doing with RVD. You know, he's got a hot-ass girlfriend uh, in Katie Forbes. Um, you know, basically having simulated sex on TV. Kind of like the Edge and Lita saga. But, uh... I, I really don't know where they're going with him, you know. He was fighting Rhino. Beat up Rhino. And he was fighting Tommy Dreamer and the Sandman and... All, all the other ECW guys. You know, now, now he's like this cocky... This cocky, you know, wrestler. He has the hot girlfriend, you know. It's almost like the Edge and Lita storyline. You know, you know, maybe they'll, maybe they'll have a live sex celebration on on Impact or something like that. I don't know. The way they're they're going at it, you know, in in some of the uh, in some of the the segments. You know, there was a segment where uh, they come in. I, I don't I think they were. Uh, I don't know who they. Who I think who it was. I think I don't remember who it was. They just barge in, and uh, they're making out, and then Katie Forbes gives them a lap dance. Which wasn't bad, but, you know. I, I would love to be RVD right now and have that hot smoking ass on my dick. But, um, it is what it is. But, that's all I gotta say about that. So, I, yeah, I gave the match two out of five stars, and it was just... I just don't know where RVD's going from here. It's just, just a shame. And that's it. Alright, then we see Gabby trying to get an interview with Sammy Callahan. Uh, but Jake... Jake Chris refuses the request, so... I'm not gonna get that. So we move on from there. All right, then we get a up to our next match. A call your shot, Kofi on the line match. Michael Elgin taking on Eddie Edwards, which so felt like an R H match. Uh, match was match was pretty good. This was a hard hitting match. This is where the pay per view started turning a little bit up a little bit. They turned it up right here. Uh, get right to the action right away. Going going at it. Like two bowls. Eddie dumps Michael to the floor. He follows him with a with a plancha. And then Elgin drops Edwards with a form strike. He peels off the mats. Look at a look at a hurt Eddie on the concrete floor. Eddie counters back, but Elgin again drops him with a, with a couple of strikes. Back in, Edward Eddie knocks Elgin to the floor again. Uh, but this time Elgin cuts off the suicide dive with a form strike. He follows up with an anarchist suplex onto the exposed floor. Ow. Uh, they go back in. My, uh, Elgin covers for a near fall. He starts to go to work with some clotheslines. And Eddie fires back. But Elgin cuts him off with a fisherman suplex for a near fall. And then Elgin has the advantage. You know. He grounds, he grounds and pounds a little bit. Hits an insecurity. Uh, then they do a uh, suplex... From, the, from inside the ring to the outside of the ring, which was a sixth spot. Uh, Eddie comes back with an overhead belly to belly on the floor. He goes back in, follows up with a suicide dive. Then he hits an insecurity, goes up top. Elgin fights back. Then Eddie hits a backpack uh, backpack stunner for a near fall. But uh, Michael Elgin comes back, uh, follows up with an overhead slam, and Eddie counters the German suplex into a blue thunder bomb for a near fall. Goes to the Boston knee party. Elgin counts into a Spain buster. Uh, then he hits some clotheslines. Eddie then counts into a German. Uh, but Elgin pops up and hits a lariat. Uh, then he falls with a suplex. Eddie fights off a power bomb attempt. They go back and forth and Eddie goes down. They go back at it again. And uh, Elgin wins that exchange. But Eddie kept fighting back. Back and forth training lariats. Then Eddie levels him. With a clothesline. Then he hits a Tiger Driver for a near fall. Then he hits a Hurricane Rana. Uh, Elgin comes back with an insecurity. Then a super kick. And they uh, go up top. Eddie tries to fight him off. Elgin does some elbow strikes. And hits an Avalanche German for a near fall. Uh, then he fires up. Go And he uh, hits Splash Mountain for a near fall. And then Eddie attacks the knee. Works a half crab. Elgin gets his way out of it. Comes into a cross face. Eddie fights out of it. Takes the ropes to break the hold. Elgin's kind of pissed and starts arguing with the ref. 
Uh, he hits a lariat and hits and delivers a bunker bomb, but Eddie counters into a cradle for the win. So Eddie picks up the win. Um, I guess he gets a trophy now. But it was a pretty good match. Very hard hitting match. I gave it 3.25 out of 5 stars. It's 20 minute match. Crowd was enjoying it. I, I enjoyed it a little bit. Like I said, 3.25 out of 5 stars for the match. And uh, we'll see what happens with Eddie Edwards and Michael Elgin as we uh, continue on with, with that. So we, we'll move on from there. and That's pretty much... That's all I gotta say about that. Alright, then we get to our next match, no disqualification match. We had Moose get on I know in a hard hitting affair. Uh match was pretty decent. Uh Moose is uh was working some Randy Randy Siri, what you mean Randy Siri? Yeah, did and some tribute uh tribute fear. I don't know what he was he was wearing some macho man gear or something, some shit like that. Anyway, uh, match was hard hitting, back and forth. Uh, they got a lot of chair shots uh, on the floor. They they go into they go on the ramp, and then uh, Moose cuts Moose uh, gets a table, sets it up, and makes a bridge of it, so we have a bridging table. Um, and they go to the apron. Ronald cuts him off, slams him to the apron. Ronald the power bombs him through the table. It's a near fall. Tosses some chairs in. Moose cuts him off. There was a trash can leg shot. Uh, then they start beating the crap out of each other again. And we get near the end. Rhino cuts cuts uh, Moose off with a lariat for a near fall. And he goes for the gula gula go go go. Was the ref and Moose through the table. Uh, covers goes for a near fall as a new ref came out. So Rhino's all fired up, looking for the spear again, but he picks Moose up. Moose hits a low blow, and then he hits the spear to finish it off. So uh, good brawl, good fight. I gave it two and a half out of five stars. And Moose looked very good, and uh, we'll see where where he goes from here. Possible world title match, who knows? So we get that. So like I said, two point. Five out of five stars for that match, and we move on. I right, then we find out that Rich Swan is not able to compete, so William Mack is gonna go at it alone. So we got that. So then we go to the World Tag Team Title Match, the North taking on Willie Mack, and it wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad match. Uh, Willie Mack doing all he could, taking on both men. You no. Know, Beating up on Josh, beating up on um, on uh, blah, 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 what is the other guy's name um, Ethan Page. Beat him up, you know. Falls with a DDT. Looked like he had a match one. We we'll get near the end, and uh, Ethan Page is dumped to the floor. Mac falls with a tope. Back in, hits a frog splash for a near fall. As uh, Ethan Page pulls out the ref, and then and then uh, looked like it was gonna be a DQ finish. But Willie's like, Willie's like, no, no. Then Mac hits the Mac stunner. Then he's double teamed, and uh, then then the North hit a double team spine buster to finish it off and retain the belts. So it was a pretty decent match. I gave it two and a half out of five stars. You know, sucks that Rich Swan couldn't make the match, which is I think going to lead into uh, the eventual heel turn of Willie Mac. Because he's going to say, say, I did this by myself. You weren't there. Like, and he's going to beat him up. Probably going to have the match when Rich Swan gets better. And then they're going to lose. And Millie Mack is going to turn on. Turn on uh, Rich Swan. And uh, that's all I got to say about that. So, yeah. Two and a half out of five stars for the match. And uh, the North continue on as champions. And we'll see who can beat them. I don't think anybody can, can right now. It's not that many tag teams in TNA. Besides Jake and Dave Christ. That's it. But we'll see what happens from there. Maybe the Brascals and that's it. But we'll see. Alright, then we find out that the next Impact pay-per-view will be Rebellion in April. Still don't have a date yet. And uh, we'll see what happens with that. But don't go. But like, like I said, when tickets go on sale, don't go. Terminal 5 is a shit venue. That's all I gotta say about that. 
All right, then we get to the world title match. Sammy Callahan and Tessa Blanchard. Uh, this was a great match. This was a, this was un, unbelievable. I uh, like their first encounter. Well, the first and second encounters. Uh, they just blew the doors off, off each other. They just beat the crap out of each other. So, uh, it starts out with Sammy attacking. He hits the Cactus Special Pile Driver. And Tessa kicks out a two. Sammy follows it up with some chops. And they go up top. Tessa bites him and then hits the Magnum and covers him in their fall. So, they were doing a lot of finishers to, to start the match, which was great. They go, then they go face-to-face face face and trade strikes. Tessa hits a head scissors, then she drop kicks to the floor. And hits a suicide dive, then another one. Goes for a third one, but it gets cut off, and Tessa counts into a hurricane rana. She goes up top, falls with a cannonball. Or, and some strikes. And then Sammy tosses a beer right into her face. Puts her, knee first, her knees first into the barricade. Ow. He rolls back in, and Tessa comes in. Stop the count. Now Sammy posts her posts her knee into the ring post and then punches at it. So he's really working on the knee of Tessa Blanchard. I think the one that was messed up. I don't remember. Um, then uh, Tessa comes back, works in an Indian death lock. Uh, Sammy works in an Indian, Indian death lock. Tessa tries to fire back, but Sammy takes out her knee. He follows that up with a sit sit out knee buster for a near fall. Really working on working on. On the knee of Tessa Blanchard. And then uh, Sammy, they, Sammy takes it to the floor and knocks Tessa out with one shot. And uh, he, then he sets up a table, goes to the power bomb, and Tessa counters, but Sammy counters the, the cannonball and power bombs are through the table. And they tease the uh, 10 count. And uh, Tessa gets back in at 9.5. Sammy goes to the floor, peels up the padding, and. Uh, Go to the apron. Tessa fires up. They trade strikes. Sammy rakes the eyes and Tessa does the same to him. They go to the ropes. Tessa hits the magnum on the apron. And Sammy spills to the floor. Tessa fights to her feet. They roll back in. And Sammy starts arguing with the ref. And uh, they, they go back and forth. Tessa's like, come on, bring it on! And um, they go out like that. And Sammy takes out her knee. But Tessa counts into a small drop. Uh, they go to the corner, and Tessa hits a draping code breaker, which gets a near fall. She has up top, to the magnum, Sammy sidesteps and hits a shoulder breaker for a near fall. Then they go back and forth again, Sammy falls with a German suplex, Tessa pops up, hits a diamond cutter for a near fall. And they get to their feet, and they go back and forth for a while, and uh, Tessa comes back, she hits the magnum for a near fall. It's in the cross face, but Sammy fights to his feet. Hits the Cactus Special Power Driver for a near fall. He looks to finish things off, but Tessa counters into a cradle, gets a near fall. Goes up with some strikes, and then Sammy spits his hook into her, into her face. Tessa counters with, with some stripes. Uh, Sammy hits a pump kick. Tessa counters into the Canadian Destroyer. She hits another one, and then finishes off with the, with the Hammerlock DDT, the Buzzsaw DDT, whatever you want to call it. Finishes off, and we have a new world champion. First time ever a woman holding a major title in any promotion. Tessa Blanchard gets the win, like a lot of people were saying that she was going to do. Had it maybe at Rebellion, but that's just me. You know, and, and through all the drama and all the controversy that Tessa's had, you know, with, with her racist comments in Japan and all that drama in Japan, Allison K, Chelsea Green, La Rosa, and... Now, Priscilla Kelly calling her a bully and all this other stuff. She overcame that. Just now is the world heavyweight champion. And a match I gave three and a half out of five stars. It was pretty good. And you know, so Tessa, you know, I'm happy she won. In, you know, in turn, you know, she, I kind of think, you know, she does have some demons that she's not perfect, as Melissa Santos said, defending her. Uh, on um, her Instagram, so you know Tessa's not perfect, and we'll, uh, and everybody's not perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Everybody's not perfect. We all have our flaws and everything else, but we overcome them, and we strive to be a better person. That's all you can do. So 
Tessa is the champion. I'm happy for her. Now we're going to see what happens as the, a new era starts in TNA. The Tessa Blanchard era. Let's see who her first opponent is going to be. I would assume it's going to be Sammy in a rematch. So they're going to they're, they're going to do this again for the fourth time. Fourth time they're going to get a rematch, probably on on Impact, like they did with a when Brian Cage won. I think he beat Sam, he beat Sammy Callahan at a pay per view. Then then on the tapings, I think the night after was the tapings. Sammy Callahan won in a steel cage, won the title, and then he. I ran with it for like a month or so. Didn't hold it for long. So that's it. So. Here's what it is. So we'll see what happens with Tessa. And Reign as champion. I think it's going to be a little bit of a long. Not a long reign per se. I'd say maybe about two, three months. Maybe four months max. But uh, I'm going to hold it with pride. And she's going to fight all these challengers. And. And all the guys, yes, I have a nice little mustache. Thank you very much. Um, I gotta cut it off later. I'm gonna cut it off probably tomorrow or uh, Wednesday. But uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, but yeah, but TNA Hard to Kill was pretty good. I gave it 6.25 out of five star out of ten stars. And uh, that's it for me. So thank you all for watching. Make sure you like this video. Hit that subscribe button down below. Subscribe to my other channels as well. Show me your love and support. And I'm going to tap that bell, turn on all my notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you have any wrestling questions or any general questions you want to ask me, any question at all, open form, open form, ask me anything. Uh, put your questions down below in the comment section of this video or any one of my future videos. Or hit me up via Facebook and Twitter. Twitter link is down below in the description box. And if you're on Facebook, just type in Peter Gilmore, you'll find me somewhere. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty much it. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Monday Night Raw coming up. And a little over an hour and a half. Watch that. I'll give you my review on Wednesday. And uh, we'll see what happens with that. So that's it. So thank you for watching. I'm Peter Gilmore signing off. Peace out. Rock on. And if you're not down with that, well, kiss my ass, suck my dick, and lick my taint and my balls too. That's all I can say about that. So thank you for watching. I'm out. Peace, bitches.